Everyone was panicking on the ship what the hell was that? Dot. No one said there was going to be a diamond here. Strix shouted at the crew on the ship, which was full of fusions, miscolored and normal gems. Ember was just standing in the passage still shell-shocked by what she had seen that was a diamond. Strix was holding Oracle's gem in her still trembling hands looking at it with a scowl on her face we should have detected her. But why didn't we? And why was he with a diamond? I guess what Oracle said was true. Ember looked up staring at Oracle's gem why is she taking so long to come out? Dot. Even just to give us a signal she asked Strix. I don't know, whatever that diamond did to her really got to her. I saw the look on her face. She was terrified. Strix walked over to the infirmary and placed Oracle's gem down. Just what did that diamond do to you she stated almost hoping for Oracle to answer but knowing nothing was going to happen. She left it and went back to Amber who had still been pacing endlessly since they got back on their ship. Strix what are we gonna do? She said her voice hinting at the uncertainty in her voice. Strix sat down on a nearby bench and spoke but her eyes did not meet Amber what else can we do? They sent us here to find some sort of freedom here. We thought the crystal gems had defended this planet enough that the gems didn't want to bother with it. Ember stopped pacing around and looked out the viewport at Neptune in the background we have the diamonds army on our back and a diamond or two in front of us. She was always the hot-headed one of the three but she knew well enough what the odds they were facing were. Definite. She said that semi-organic was a diamond? Amber asked just looking for confirmation from Strix. Yes, for all we know he might have been toying with us that whole time. It was silent for a moment between the two as they contemplated all the information that they were still trying to process. And I struck him. Amber said in a weak and quiet whisper that she was hoping Strix couldn't hear, but she did. Their situation was grim already having been separated from their armada in a separate strike group, but most of it had been decimated when they inevitably ran into a gym patrol group that was already battling some separatist forces. They had one if you could call it that having left the majority of their force holding them off to provide a distraction whilst they escaped in their cruiser escorted by two destroyers and some fighters. Only a small fraction of what their strike group had been and they knew their armada was not going to risk venturing near gem territory even for a rescue mission. To outsiders it may seem like they were a strong force and their strength was there but even they were rational. Ember we can't rely on the armada coming to save us, even if this isn't gym territory it's close enough that it would be too risky. They were thinking about every solution they could pull off. What about the crystal gems? Amber asked worriedly looking at Strix that could be a solution but from what we heard about them from the gems on homeworld, is that they're monsters that shattered a diamond Strix said looking down thoughtfully. If they don't like us or they think we are more trouble than we are worth, then they could easier get rid of us. For the moment we can hide out here in the asteroid clusters, I don't like how close we are to that diamond. Those diamonds but what other choice do we have? With our current firepower we can put up a fight but if we try to jump and it alerts the diamonds to us. Well me, you and every other gem on this ship will be imprisoned or even worse. They both felt a shiver down their spine thinking about the possibility of being shattered. It was really something only reserved for the worst of the worst or something on a diamond's whim if they deemed you dangerous enough to warn it. They knew with them being part of the opposition something like this might happen but never thought the day would come. But then a thought set into Amber's mind that she muttered out unintentionally I attacked a diamond. She said collapsing to her knees as it all started to set and they're going to shatter me Strix. They had fought many gems before but even during their deployments in the armada, they learned to avoid diamonds because whenever one showed up to a combat zone it would only be moments before all you could hear on comms were screams and slow signals. 
High Command made it clear to avoid those zones even sometimes they had to ignore pleas for help from gems they had known for what seemed like forever. If it comes down to us having to serve or be shattered, what are we going to do? What am I going to do? Amber asked her tail wrapping tightly around her. Then she felt a hand on her shoulder and looked up to see Strix standing up with piercing eyes. This is something we must ask everyone and not just a decision we can just make for everyone abroad this ship, and even with what they choose. Amber remember you have your own choice. They nodded at each other with their heads now a bit more clear. Back on the moon. It had been some time since the attack by the outsider gems and things had calmed down since then. Luckily no one had been seriously hurt and some of Blue's gems were already working on repairs and upgrades to this ancient facility. Stephen was resting as the rest of the gems and Blue Diamond spoke. Blue Jasper called as her former diamond looked back at her yes Jasper she looked at Amethyst who was waiting worriedly looking at the earth from a viewport. What do the Separatists want in this sector? They never venture this far away asked Jasper. Blue was trying to think of an answer to, running through all the probable possibilities. The looks on their eyes tell me they're monsters. Amethyst from the viewport dragging Blue and Jasper's attention. The way they were fighting makes me think that something really bad is coming. Amethyst walked away from the viewport and towards Blue and Jasper. Stephen tried to reason with them but they didn't even give him a chance. Amethyst said her hands curling into fists. All the while Blue was listening intently till she decided to voice her opinion from what I gather, they're part of the Separatist movement. Blue said breaking the quiet silence that had formed. Separatist? Asked Amethyst with a confused look on her face slowly turning to Jasper who just nodded. Yes Separatist. While you Crystal Gems were the only survivors of the war fought with the diamonds and the rest fell, they were others. Blue's diamond glowed as it started showing holograms of what looked like battlefields full of gems. There are many factions to be precise all different in a way and each with its own goals. Jasper ran her hand through her hair before continuing some are set a shatter on sight but others to simply destabilize and capture or possibly realign. But that's rare. Amethyst was just shocked at this information. Sure they knew that the crystal gems fought across multiple systems and they were possibly the only survivors as said by the diamonds. But to think they were other groups that just means before she could finish Blue finished her line for her we were fighting on multiple fronts. That's the only reason you were able to defeat us. Stephen had gotten up but was just standing by the door frame out of sight listening in. Blue continued given that these gems chose to attack even though I was present shows us that it must be quite a powerful group or a bunch of amateurs. Jasper then took notice of Stephen standing in the back of the room. She didn't like the look on his face and got up to talk with him. Hey Stephen, she said but rather than reply he looked as if he was off in another world. A subtle glow came from his diamond as it looked like he saw a ghost mom was the only word he could utter in a whisper. Blue didn't know what this was but at that very moment, she could sense pink once again weak and faintly. Blue bolted upright startling Amethyst as she frantically looked around the room till her eyes fell on Stephen, his gem. No his diamond she uttered almost as if not believing her own words. Amethyst looked over at Stephen a little taken aback by Blue's words Stephen a diamond that would be crazy, Rose was a normal quartz so there's no way he could be one. Back on earth, it had been months since Garnet and Pearl had seen Stephen. They could tell it was affecting their teamwork only talking in occasional passing at base and missions. Amethyst came and left when she pleased never being around, sometimes Ruby and Sapphire would split and argue a whole day's worth on things that could be different. But at that moment they both felt it and looked up in the direction of the moon, a diamond. Pearl exclaimed no that's pink diamond Pearl stated the shock not leaving her face. Whatever that was, it was weak and probably an involuntary release of power said Garnet getting back into a meditative pose and focusing. We can't pinpoint it all the while Pearl stood there with a haunted expression, 
You told me that you would not be able to come back but what is this, it's like you're trying to find yourself again. Back on their cruiser Strix and Ember had calmed down a bit, mostly Ember who was still in a panic for attacking Steven. Do you think Oracle is okay now? Strix didn't want to answer not because she didn't want to but because she didn't know. What happened to Oracle has never happened before. That look on her face as if she were being shattered is still on my mind. Ember hadn't seen the look on Oracle's face but judging at how Strix was acting this was definitely different. As they got to the emergency ward of their ship, they saw Oracle's gem still on the fat surface Strix had put it on so nothing has changed? Asked Ember hopefully, only to have that hope dashed by Strix simply looking away. The crystal gems are looking like the only option. Strix said with a solemn tone in her voice. They had never participated in the Crystal Gems War but they had heard of it, and most of the time it seems these stories would just be retellings of nightmares. Strix, Ember said grabbing her attention but she could tell from the way she was holding it that there was more to be said. A part of me wants to run and apologize to Blue Diamond and that semi-organic. Normally Ember would never been like this choosing to mostly feed on her own ego and skill, showing off to those that will give her the time of day whether willing or otherwise. If everything goes well they might let us pay a little price but might forgive us. She stuttered out the last words doubting them herself. They both knew after the uprising that happened so long back that the diamonds took no tolerance to gems that disobeyed and went a wall. As much as I would like to believe that Ember, we both know that's not how the diamonds operate. Strix being the smarter of the three was always thinking of everything and to her. All the separatist groups were nothing but rather power-hungry wannabe diamonds. All of them had their own motives and never aligned. A part of her understood why Ember simply wanted to return to being under a diamond's control. It was safe. You were protected from the other monsters in the universe so much worse than the diamonds she hated to say. Being under a diamond's protection meant you could expect a whole armada forever backing you better the monsters you know than the unknown. If it came down to it she knew what she had to do, they both did, she just hoped that they would all still be together on the same side.